Intro to Waves. So waves are a very common natural uh, phenomena. Uh, one of the simple examples would be uh, water waves, say on the surface of the ocean. Uh, some other uh, common examples would be the ripple waves on fabric or a wave pulse traveling down a rope or a, a flick of a whip. Um, and then there's also examples like sound waves. Uh, sound waves are invisible, uh, but they are uh, waves nevertheless. Now, in um, effects animation, uh, the probably the most important types of waves are uh, water waves. So here you see uh, two examples of these uh, small scale ripples um, on the surface of the water here in uh, Kung Fu Panda 2 and then some uh, more significant uh, ocean waves uh, from this uh, image from the trailer of uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2. Uh, waves are also important in character effects animation, so you'll see uh, rippling waves often in hair, fabric, flesh, so uh, say the waves of uh, in hair as it's blowing in the wind, or the, um, as I say, the rippling of fabric, or even soft flesh, as in uh, toothless um, uh, wing flaps and such. Now, there's um, two basic uh, types of waves. The first type is a transverse wave. So, in a transverse wave, you have the motion of material, and that is perpendicular to the motion of the waves. So uh, ocean waves, uh, water waves are an example of transverse waves. Um, we see another example here as uh, Luxo Jr. is hopping. There's a wave pulse that um, travels in, in the cord. Uh, here's a quick um, video that shows transverse waves traveling on a uh, slinky, so you see that the um, motion of the material is uh, in that video up and down, and the wave is traveling first to the right, and then reflects and travels to the left, but it's the wave motion is perpendicular to the material motion. Uh, another example of a transverse wave is when a crowd is doing uh, the wave, so the crowd stands up and sits down, and the wave travels. So um, this emphasizes the fact that the material is not traveling with the wave. So the people in the crowd are not running down the aisles or down, running down the rows of the stadium. They basically stay in their seats. They just stand up and sit down, but the wave travels down the length of the stadium. Uh, yet another example of transverse waves would be a flag cycle, which is a common animation exercise. So this is just a um, typical sort of uh, wave on uh, fabric. Now, there's a second uh, category of waves uh, called longitudinal waves. And with longitudinal waves, the wave motion and the material motion are actually um, parallel. Uh, so a um, crowd could do this type of wave if instead of standing up and sitting down, they um, would swing from side to side while uh, sitting in their seats. Uh, here's an example for a slinky uh, creating a longitudinal wave. So you see the wave traveling down the slinky as a compression pulse. And here's a little animation that uh, shows both a transverse wave on a slinky and a longitudinal wave. Again, the only difference is whether the material motion is perpendicular uh, to the wave motion or uh, parallel to the wave motion. Now, a very important example of longitudinal waves are sound waves. Now, we um, 
Uh, these are not visible to us, but uh, if you could see the atoms as they are uh, moving uh, in this animation, on the left we see uh, a plate which is pushing and then pulling back, uh, sort of similar to the vibrating uh, drum head or um, a speaker uh, head uh, vibrating um, back and forth. And then that pushes the atoms of the air, uh, but the atoms of the air uh, basically stay in place. They move from side to side and uh, they hit other atoms and then that um, disturbance uh, travels as a sound wave. Now, you should be careful to distinguish the difference between waves and actual flow of material. So, uh, with waves, the material oscillates in place as the wave moves, but when you have flow, that's when the material itself is moving. So, when you're uh, speaking, uh, the sound waves in the air uh, are waves, but if you, uh, say, blow out a candle, then the air travels out of your mouth and actually flows forward to reach the um, candles. Uh, of course, typically flow is uh, much slower than sound. Sound is uh, very fast. Uh, and here's another example showing um, these smoke rings are an example of a flow. So you can, you can see the smoke rings coming out of this smoke cannon. Uh, they, they travel fast, but not nearly as fast as sound. And you can tell that this is, uh, the smoke rings are a flow because the smoke itself uh, is traveling out of the cannon and uh, with the uh, smoke ring. Now, one of the main characteristics of a wave for both um, transverse and longitudinal is the amplitude of the wave. So when you have a cyclic motion, we know we have an amplitude. And um, with waves, it's similar to uh, vibrations or oscillations. So the amplitude is the uh, measure from the uh, extreme to uh, the center. Uh, we refer to that as the uh, amplitude. Uh, for something like ocean waves, uh, this could be measured as simply the uh, height, say, in feet of, uh, of the waves. Uh, there's also other scales that are used. So like this Beaufort scale um, goes from uh, 0 to 12, uh, 0 being uh, nearly dead calm, and 12 being uh, you're in the middle of a typhoon and uh, the waves are uh, storm waves in the high seas. Uh, with uh, sound, the uh, amplitude is uh, indicated to us by the loudness of the sound. So the louder the sound, the larger the amplitude, uh, because these are pressure variations in uh, sound waves. You see that in this um, cartoon. This, uh, these density and pressure variations are exaggerated in this uh, cartoon, but this gives you the, the basic idea of what is meant by the um, amplitude for a longitudinal sound wave. Uh, sound wave amplitude is uh, usually described in terms of a loudness measured in decibels. Uh, so this um, loudness is uh, measured on a logarithmic scale. So uh, this is because our perception of um, amplitude when we're listening to sound uh, varies uh, logarithmically. So we have uh, zero being uh, calibrated at the threshold of hearing for a uh, an average um, uh, adult, um, young adult, um, up to about 130, which is when sound starts to be uh, painful, and then up to uh, somewhere around 160, 170, where it's the maximum possible uh, amplitude, because at that point you start creating uh, pockets of vacuum. Uh, a similar uh, logarithmic scale is the, the Richter scale. So um, with the Richter scale, every time we go up uh, by one notch, say from um, magnitude six 
earthquake to a magnitude 7 earthquake that is uh, 10 times a uh, larger amplitude measured as the ground motion. So uh, Richter scale and decibel scale, both um, logarithmic scales for amplitude. So in uh, summary, uh, for transverse waves, the material motion is perpendicular to the wave motion. Uh, for longitudinal waves, the material motion is parallel to the wave's motion. Uh, for um, waves, the material oscillates in place, and that's different from a flow, uh, such as with wind, in which case the material is actually moving uh, with the flow. And the amplitude of a wave is determined by the displacement of the material as it oscillates. And finally, there's various types of scales uh, for um, measuring wave amplitude, uh, one example being the decibel uh, scale uh, for sound. We'll uh, get into more uh, wave properties in the next few tutorials. So, see you then.